Are you ready to start the day, Rex? Hey, you're not Rex. You're Rex? Who's that imitator? Is that Daniel Rex? <laughs> We're going out the door with T-Rex and TK on this gray day. Oh, the line only goes so far. We got the Bruins leash on before you know it. <laughs> yeah, we'll be playing hockey, but not today. What are we going to do today? We're going to hope that that cloud thins out. There's a thin spot right there. This is called the stratocumulus cloud, and it is somewhat associated with the remnant of Helene and also the fact that we have high pressure to the north and wind is there moving from high to low, and the codfish is pointed toward the east and the southeast. So whenever we get that flow coming in off the ocean, uh, you got to beware for these low clouds. And we also have high clouds at the top of the atmosphere. Why don't we go right to the velocity azimuth display? What? It's a profile of the atmosphere showing the wind down below 5,000 feet all coming in from the east. And then there's a gap because there's no data, because there's no cloud above this low cloud until you get way up in the sky. Then you get to the high cloud and you can see the wind is from the west. You see this uh, tool only works if there's something to detect in the sky other than dust and birds. So the uh, differential advection, low level coming in from the east, high level coming in from the west. And we have what's called a Rex block in the atmosphere, not named after T-Rex, but Daniel Rex. And he was a meteorologist, and he discovered in 1950 that when you get a ridge over a trough, it tends to stall weather systems. And I'll show you the T-Rex block right here tomorrow. This is the upper level flow, and at 500 millibars, up close to 20,000 feet, there's a ridge in eastern Canada that brings nice weather to eastern Canada. And then there's a trough, the cutoff low over Kentucky and Tennessee. That is the remnant of Hurricane Helene. And that upper level low is going to look like slide out to the south of New England on Tuesday. So perhaps we are not going to get uh, the precipitation from Helene. Perhaps. Still not totally sold. Good morning, stand-up paddler on Fallen's Pond on Bass River. Uh, where I'm not sure if we're going to see too much sunshine today here on Cape Cod. As you move to the north, though, increasing amounts of sunshine. Here's the satellite imagery this morning, and I think most noticeable is that big cluster of thunderstorms off the southeastern United States, and with that block, that's not coming north. And then the remnant of Helene, thousand about seven millibar low now over Kentucky and Tennessee, and then in New England, a lot of low clouds and fog, and uh, we have. Uh, high pressure system just to the north of New England. Here's the surface analysis. Uh, it's still about the same, about 10, 18, 10, 19, centered more over the Gulf of Maine. So that's where our air is coming from. And with the lower sun angle this time of year and the shorter days, it's harder to burn off these low level clouds, but that's not a bad Sunday. Temperatures mostly in the 60s uh, near the shore to low 70s. Uh, I did not check the surf. I think there might be still a tiny ground swell left. The surface with the temperature map the surface map showing the temperatures and wind and dew point. Now you see the 40s in northern New England with very light moving air today. Uh, this morning it was calm and here in southern New England all the way back to Ohio on the bottom and moving towards the left which is west. This is the circulation with the high pressure system and the remnant of what was Helene uh, over the Appalachians and new data is coming in. Uh, there's a, a, a skier, a, a outdoor adventurer named Billy Bowling. Is that really your name? Anyhow, very serious, and he's been trying to help the residents there in North Carolina and eastern Tennessee. He posted this from near Black Mountain, North Carolina. That is right there, right there in the Pisgah National Forest. Those mountains of 5,000 feet drained right into these lower elevation villages and pretty much wiped them out. No, no communication, no way in or out by... Uh, anything other than helicopter and where is the National Guard? I really don't get that. And so it's been just sort of villagers taking care of one another. And he also posted this from Irwin, Tennessee, and he shows that the, uh, the emergency crews there uh, did their best to get the, uh, the people, at, I think this was a health facility, onto the roof during the floods to save their lives. And search and rescue goes on. The loss of life still unknown. I think I've heard of about 30 or 40 fatalities so far, but it's, it's bound to grow as communications are still cut off near Asheville, Tennessee. And uh, Matt up at NBC5 in Burlington, Vermont kind of did a, a comparison. He says Burlington, Vermont averages about 
37 inches of rain per year. And here, uh, the latest data shows that we had close to 38 inches of rain at Jonas Ridge in this storm. And just amazing. Ryan Maui said, this atmospheric river is worse than the ones we hear about on the West Coast. He showed this with the plume of moisture coming right out of the tropics, right out of the Caribbean, across the Bahamas, and running into those mountains. So not only did you have a hurricane, you had the upslopes, upslope flow with the air going up the hill that causes condensation and precipitation. And it was also an anomalous cold air mass aloft, so cold air tropical running into cold rings out the moisture and it is definitely one for the history books something that would only recur once a century if that and certainly not in our lifetime so extreme weather uh, is happening somewhere on the globe every day and volcaholic we talked about him the other day publishes images from around the world his latest was from nepal uh, so on the other side of the world also extreme floods are happening we can take a breather now though. It's, uh, uh, it's quiet here in the Northeast and the latest guidance has the remnant of Helene missing us to the South. You won't believe what the latest guidance is showing for late next week and next weekend, a total wholesale change that just says confidence is very low. I'll show the national map again. Uh, you see this, well, the Northwest, that low pressure system there in Washington with the front into Oregon. It's come ashore. That is going to be the front that eventually picks up the remnant of Helene. Uh, but Helene is uh, going to be drifting to the east before it gets here. Here's the map this afternoon. There's Helene off to the south and some showers are possible near the south coast of New England. And then if we go to tomorrow, that front, uh, there's one front that's coming through here that's not getting Helene. That's coming in tomorrow, tomorrow night. And that's just new uh, cooler, high pressure to the north. It's going to keep our flow coming in from the east. And then we go out to Tuesday morning. Now the front is crossing the Great Lakes, but notice the separation between the front that's near Lake Michigan and the remnant of Helene that's easing out well south of New England. So confidence is building now that we're gonna get the solution that spares us any wind or rain from that system. But it gets kind of wild after that. Let's go back to that upper level flow at 500 millibars. And I'm gonna show you the T-Rex block there. It's actually called a Rex block. Uh, it's gonna ease with the ridging over Eastern Canada. That's really nice up there in Eastern Canada with a warming trend, but uh, we get the ocean flow near the South coast of New England. And then it's a rip and jet stream off the Pacific ocean. And we just, it, it, the models do not have a good handle. They're gonna be little short waves embedded in that incredibly fast flow that's right on the Canada United States border. And then watch it start to buckle with a trough coming through here about Thursday or so. And all of a sudden, there's a little possible mini nor'easter there. And then watch what happens after that. Over the weekend, cooler air starts to come in from Canada. Uh, meanwhile, record warm in the west is building. And then day 10, oh my goodness, it's going to be record hot in much of the United States. But we have our own upper level cutoff low with a vertically stacked storm near the Gulf of Maine on day 10. I think that's around October 7th or 8th, Tuesday or so. Oh my goodness, where did that come from? Uh, now we'll show that with the surface maps and see what that looks like, what it evolves into. And here it is, this is the Euro from Pivotal Weather and there is the weak sort of front to our south with the remnant or waves of energy that are just the, the remnant waves of low pressure missing us to the south. Here comes the front into the Midwest. It looks fairly impressive there on Tuesday, but then really decays as it comes in here on Wednesday. So the chance for any rain in New England on Wednesday is diminished, but watch what happens after that. We have buckling in the atmosphere, and all of a sudden about next Saturday or so, there's a low pressure system trying to form right over Southern New England, looking like an inside runner nor'easter. That's gonna be about Saturday or so, and then that kind of gives us a little break on Sunday. And by the way, confidence very low in this, but that's what the latest guidance says. And then next Tuesday, a week from Tuesday, look at that uh, sub 990 low pressure system right near Cape Cod. That would be a big wind and rain maker, almost cold enough for snow, but not quite at that point. And there's gonna be record warm to the west of that. So. The odds of this happening, I think, are fairly low. The euro is definitely an outlier in this, but Canada is getting colder and the sun angle is getting lower and we're heading toward October, which can be an incredibly stormy month, as we all know. 
Sands hurricane. Oh, and incidentally, at that time, uh, there is something in the Gulf of Mexico, not quite a Kirk, uh, maybe a Kirk, uh, maybe a tropical cyclone, maybe named. Uh, hopefully not, though, uh, to spare everyone in the southeastern United States any more fear and anxiety from just a forecast, not to mention the real weather. So sometimes forecasts can create as much fear and anxiety. Uh, but Helene was the real deal, and we're still saying our prayers for the people in the southeastern United States. And uh, as we transition out of the weather to the and more, thank you for the comments. Never get enough and more uh, from the beaches. Well, it's more of a lighthearted one yesterday with the clouds coming and going in Weymouth and TK and T-Rex hitting the road south here to Cape Cod where there was an extraordinary event for the canine dogs. There was a motorcycle ride from Dennis to P-Town for the canines yesterday. And there must have been about 500 motorcycles that went by. And uh, there goes Mike with, hey, where are you going with that begonia? Is that begonia going into the trash? I'll take it. Let's put it in the TK Rescue Garden. <laughs> uh, yeah, the TK Rescue Garden out back. So, oh, we also paid respects at the Hallett Funeral Home uh, for Paul Pru. And uh, we're going to have another gathering of friends and family today under this kind of fitting gray sky. All right, here's the end more and time lapse. Talk to you later. Past noon, it was mostly gray this morning, but it's brightening up with these swirling clouds to the north side, the remnant of Helene. Kind of annoying onshore flow has redeveloped with high pressure to the north. And that catamaran that was over by West Augusta now is uh, looking like it may be preparing to set sail. Been watching this one kind of pop around. I think it's a transient, but it's been here for about a month. Are you heading out? Nice looking boat, huh? Anybody surfing over there at Hull today? Most assuredly. Not TK though, we're headed south. Gorgeous. I'm not a big fan of the road trip, are you? I like how the low clouds are coming in from the east. Oh, beautiful sand of mine. Looks like we have some alto cumulus clouds out there, T Rex. No thunderstorms around, are there? So it means mid level instability and moisture. Traffic, pretty much a non issue. Fog on my mind now. To fog or not to fog? That is the question. You can usually walk the dog and tell if there's fog when you're over here at Horsefoot Cove. Looking off to the east. Definitely a low cloud. That looks kind of fun, huh? Don't let summer go. Light breeze from the east. And off to the west, alto cumulus. Clouds moving in two different directions. Up high from the west, down low from the east. Always makes for fun. Oh, look, the shanty is open. Hang in there, buddy. You're almost home. It's another couple miles. It'll be fine. That is the cloud from the east, the stratocumulus. The fog cloud appears to be winning out. It's still pretty high, so it's not quite touching the ground, but onshore flow resumes. Dave, is that your motorcycle? Was kind of hoping for a, a wink from the sun here over Route 28 Bass River Bridge. Let's call it a day. A time lapse from South Dennis. About the four miles, five miles north of here on the Bass River. We call it Bass River Beauty. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, where are you guys going? Florida? Is the weather better down there? No. <laughs>